when I look inside, I see that I'm nothing. This is wisdom. When I look outside, I see that I'm everything. This is love. Between these two, my life turns. This is my favorite quote by Nisargadatta Maharaj. And it's just like that. Love is an outward flowing experience or process. When we try to get love, when we try to be seen, be heard, get validation in overt ways, as well as in covert ways or ways that we're even largely unconscious of, we suffer. We feel a sense of lack. We feel a sense of neediness. We have challenges interacting with people. When we feel the natural flow of the outward expression of love in the way we move, in the way we speak, in the way we perceive, we feel a synchronicity with all of life. Life becomes very simple. It becomes satisfying. This is compassionate action. Compassionate action is not holding back the flow of unconditional love, feeling how it moves naturally, being willing to directly investigate and address any repressed emotions we have that are keeping us from fully dying into this moment again and again and again. Compassionate action is an inward movement just as much as it's an outward movement. It's a movement of authenticity, honesty, sincerity. So as many people who watch this channel know, I donate the proceeds from the advertising on the channel to a different charity every month. And this month I'm going to combine both June and July because I just haven't gotten to making a video about this yet. So the combined total of both months is going to go to a charity that is a charity I've been donating to for a long time personally, and it's one of my favorite charities. It's very um, profound in its effect and far-reaching in its implications on the change it can provide to someone's life. So I'll do something that I don't usually do in these videos, or I'm not sure I have ever done, and that's talk about something uh, medical. So. So if anyone watching is interested and has been curious in the past about this subject, then watch this next five minutes and you might learn something interesting and that will lead into an understanding of what this charity actually does and where this money's going. So have you ever wondered when a woman is in labor and she needs a C-section, but she lives in a developing country or lives far away from any medical care and has no access to a physician or a nurse, a hospital, a clinic, or even a midwife. What happens when that baby is unable to come out? What's the natural course of what we call in medicine, arrest of descent or inadequate progression of labor? Well, it can lead to a significant amount of morbidity and even mortality, meaning the death of the mother or the baby. The typical progression of labor is that the baby continues to descend through the pelvis, the cervix dilates, and at some point it's delivered. Now when, for whatever reason, that's not progressing properly and labor is stalled, in modern medicine what we do is a cesarean section, so we surgically remove the baby. But if you have no access to medical care, that labor can be prolonged two, three, four days. Now the reasons this happens are a few. One is called cephalopelvic disproportion which essentially means the baby's head does not fit through the pelvis. Uh, another reason can be inadequate labor, inadequate contractions. Another reason is malpresentation, which means the baby's not coming out the usual way. It could be face up. It could be presenting asynclitic, which means the head's kind of coming out in a crooked or diagonal way. It could be a face presentation. So any of these can decrease the chance that that baby's head can move through the pelvis and be delivered vaginally. So these would be summarized by the terms arrest of descent or failure to progress. As I mentioned, this can result in the death of the baby or even the death of the mother. 
but sometimes it's just a very prolonged labor and the baby is eventually delivered. But because the head has been pushing on the pelvis or on the pubic symphysis for so long, it causes tissue necrosis. It causes ischemia in the tissues, in the pelvic tissues. And so there's injury to those tissues and they can become infected and so forth in the acute setting, but they can also heal up and fistulize. And there are two types of fistulas that tend to happen in this setting. One is a vesicovaginal fistula, the other is a rectovaginal fistula, which means a fistula between the bladder and the vaginal vault or between the rectum and the vaginal vault. In either case, this leads to chronic leakage, foul smelling discharge, and obviously increased risk of ongoing infections and so forth. So a lot of these women with these fistulas, they end up healed and they live like this for years. And often they're ostracized or not able to live in their family's house because they smell so bad and there's shame involved and um, it's a very unfortunate situation. Now, the good news is that this can be surgically repaired for between five and $600 US. So this charity organization is called the Fistula Foundation. This most commonly happens in Sub-Saharan Africa and Middle Eastern Asia. So what the Fistula Foundation does is facilitates these women being transported to hospitals that specialize in taking care of these fistulas. And it's a reasonably simple surgery, even if it's been a long-standing illness, that can dramatically change their life, completely turn their life around and give them their life back for a relatively small cost to us. So that's the Fistula Foundation, and that's where the money from June and July are going. So thank you for being a viewer of the channel. Your money does go to these charities. I'll highlight a different charity every month or so. These are charities that I've done some research on. They have good ratings and do a lot of good work. So thanks again and enjoy your day.